Hello there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell and joined as always uh, by the head coach of your Southeastern basketball team, Coach Jay Ladner. Coach, thanks for being here. It's really hard to believe, but we're down to the final two regular season games of the season as you get ready for the conference tournament over in Katy, Texas. Uh, this past week, you were on the road for two big road games in the conference. Yes, uh, and unfortunately, it came out on the short end of both of them, uh, but very, very hard fought games. Certainly proud of our team's effort, but you know that we want to win ball games, and that's what that's what the bottom line it comes to. But I can't fault our guys' effort. I know we've talked about it a few times this year, but uh, your team has really been hit with the injury bug. Right before uh, you kind of chuckle there, because it, it has uh, probably been you know one of the worst years ever for for injuries uh, to your club. But right before the Central Arkansas game, you find out that Zay Jackson was going to be done for the year. He's a guy who'd been one of your leading scorers on the season, and and, and really the court general as the point guard position. Well, uh, certainly, you know I, I've had the honor and privilege, I guess, of coaching for 25 years. I've certainly never had as many injuries, and in, in certainly the extent of injuries that we've had throughout this season. But again, that's just the way it is. We've We've certainly tried not to let our players uh, make excuses about it. Uh, our team is what our team is and what we put on the floor. And we expect each player to go out there and, and prepare and do the best, the very best that they possibly can. But it, at some point it begins to, it begin, does begin to affect your team in the sense that uh, it would be very similar to uh, our football team losing uh, six of 11 of the players on offense, including Brian Bennett including his backup, and that's kind of where we are. We've lost uh, our starting point guard, Zay Jackson, uh, to an ACL injury. In fact, Zay had just had surgery uh, yesterday. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's very difficult to replace and then to have to re constantly retool our offensive patterns and schemes throughout the year like we've done. Uh, but we have a resilient team, and, and they've, they've continued to fight. Uh, uh, certainly had an opportunity. Our last three games have been heartbreakers. We lose by the last shot of the game. We, we lose uh, within the last few seconds at Central Arkansas. And then, you know, we're, we're a one-point game with uh, seven or eight minutes left at McNeese and just, just ran out of gas. But uh, not far away. Looking forward to finishing up this week. We go to UNO, obviously, on Thursday. I know you'll discuss that later in the show. Uh, and then Nickel Saturday for our, our home finale, senior night and then and on to the conference tournament. We're certainly proud of, uh, of our team for qualifying. Uh, you mentioned uh, Zay Jackson having surgery on his ACL. I asked you before the show, uh, as far as timetables go, he will be back for next year, though. Is that correct? Well, you know, all results that we got back very early from the surgery yesterday were very, were very positive, and that he had multiple issues. And to his credit, he was playing uh, in, with a, anybody that had seen him play since the Winthrop game, which was – uh, prior about our second week of Christmas, which by the way was one of our few games that we had our entire squad there played very well uh, and kind of beginning to have things going in the right direction and then uh, things kind of fell apart. I jinxed us. I remember saying prior to that game with our coaches, hey, this is the first time we've actually been healthy. Well, it didn't last throughout that game, but he continued to try to play on it, but it had deteriorated to the point where had he continued to try, it would not have been in his best interest, and he had a chance of really, basically, as, a, as the physician, our orthopedic surgeon said, you had an opportunity to blow his knee out. We couldn't take that uh, risk with his future, and he, he wanted to continue to play, uh, or, or not personally, but also for the team. We're certainly counting on him for next season. All right, let's get back to the play on the court. We're going to go out to Conway, Arkansas, as your Lions took on Central Arkansas in a Southland Conference matchup. Here's the highlights. All right, Coach, on the road against Central Arkansas. I made that long trip to take on these guys. Uh, started off uh, good with the first basketball ball game. Well, that's a little clear out we run for Jimmy. Jimmy's an outstanding driver. We try to get a couple of those each game with him. Uh, you see Cedric Jenkins there stealing the basketball. Cedric has really... Uh, he does an outstanding job of anticipating and getting his hands on basketballs, uh, created an easy basket for us. But, uh, I thought our team, you know, we played certainly played well enough to win, and maybe we'll dis disappoint. We didn't finish it out, but uh, here you see uh, Cedric driving the ball hard to the basket again, finishing strong. He's really filled the void with uh, Zay being out. Uh, nice, nice pick and roll action there by Daniel Greaves and Devontae up, and Don Devontae finishes with a big flush. Beautiful pass there. Uh, from Cedric to Daniel Grees, easy basket. Love team basketball. A lot of stuff going towards the rim uh, in this one against Central Arkansas. Well, certainly uh, the the disappointing thing about this particular game, we played well enough out, uh, offensively to win it. 
Uh, I felt like that we our breakdown on defense and maybe some lack of toughness there at times cost us on the defensive end. We don't like to we don't like to sugarcoat things. I don't think we did a good enough job, especially at crunch time of winning this game because we 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 stayed comfortably ahead during the game and it is I think our guys got gotten a little comfort zone and. All of a sudden, a little run by Central Arkansas and it turned the game around. But, uh, there's Jimmy making a nice move off a of ball screen, nice drive and finish. Uh, we just got to just got to do a better job on the other. Another again, uh, Central Arkansas was struggling to guard in a pick and roll action. Uh, we had some had great success uh, attacking the basket, as you mentioned. Really can get inside the paint anytime you want. If you look, I think every one of the points we've scored here through these highlights have all been in the paint. Uh, really attacking our elite. The, the disappointing thing is that, and that's certainly what we want to do, but the disappointing thing is that we shot uh, about 53% for the game from the field, and, and generally when you do that, that's a winning effort. But uh, again, I keep referring to uh, they were doing the same thing on the other end. Now they shot the ball from outside uh, as compared to ours attacking the basket, and they did a good job, but that's the strength of their team. They're a perimeter-oriented ball club. And, you can see a freshman walk on Justin Lobel there taking attacking the basket. Ochi following up a miss with a nice stuff. Well, as you can see from the score that just popped in, they're actually down by a couple here, but it was really nip and tuck. It. You, you would actually separate yourself in the second half uh, by a few points, and then, like you mentioned, they just make that run at the end. They did. I had another beautiful play there. We steal it out of our half-court trap, and another great pass, ups and on the floor. Nice I think Devontae, and beautiful. that's the start of the second half. We opened up with a little back called back cut action and got the basket. And again, you know, I, the, the disappointing thing is that we don't we don't finish that thing. And we should have. You know, we really need to get W there. I mean, you look up right there, you're up by six here in the second half of the ball game. Another nice drive. Just seems like everything inside just could really up by seven at this point. Uh, maybe had a chance to, to, to separate even more at this point and, and really get away from them. Well, and that's what we felt like, you know, and we had an opportunity to you can see us really up seven. It's getting later and later in the second half. Problem is, is we're not extending that lead. Uh, it's, it's staying at seven, which is telling you what's happening on the other end. Uh, we're continuing to score uh, and, and stay ahead. But uh, one, one run cost us, uh, just a very brief spurt. Uh, give them credit. Uh, there's Jimmy uh, putting us back up two. All right, Coach, this was a tough one on the road at Central Arkansas, a game that once again came down to the wire. Uh, it's hard to win on the road in college basketball. Uh, just, just couldn't get it done on this night. Well, you know, we were up seven points uh, really uh, late in the second half. Felt like that we had the game in hand. But uh, as, as has happened to us at times this year, when we need to get a critical stop, we weren't able to get one. Uh, had a, had a, a couple of uh, uh, baskets go in and out on us, but they converted and, and converted on uh, several consecutive possessions and allowed them to go ahead of us, and then we end up losing a tight one right there at the end. Uh, certainly disappointing. Uh, Central Arkansas played an outstanding game um, and have to give credit to them, and as always. However, we felt like that was one that got away from us. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, the Lions will be back in action just a couple of days later. A little more south at Natchitoches against Northwestern State right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Inside Southeastern basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston parishes. They strive to help low income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which 
accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. The Lions would look to rebound on the road against Natchitoches a couple of days after that Central Arkansas game. Let's go out and check out the highlights against Northwestern State. All right, Coach, are you back in action uh, against the Northwestern State Demons and in-state rivalry? Really a tough place to play up at Prather Coliseum. It's kind of a unique setup uh, for college basketball, but they always play very well at home. Well, Northwestern, you know, they've got one of the better teams in our league. They, Coach McConaughey's been there a long time. They've had a lot of success. they had some success in the NCAA tournament. Um, so it's a good environment. We were excited. Uh, our players, again, coming off our, our performance at Central Arkansas, I think wanted to prove a little bit. And, and, and I, I was more, I was certainly uh, more pleased with our effort at Northwestern than I was at Central Arkansas. Uh, Northwestern's, their, their MO is always they play a lot of players. They run up and down the floor. And they, they're the, uh, the highest scoring team in Division One basketball. So if you're going to beat them, you got to score with them. And, and you're ahead early by five. Well, in uh, Northwestern, like you said, they, they play a lot of players there. Uh, they, one of their strategies is attempt to wear you down. They do a great job of transition basketball, particularly on the offensive end. Uh, they've got the number one and number three leading score in the country uh, in, in, in Jalen West and Zeke Woodley, so they, they have some firepower there. Uh, uh, one, one of the other things that they do extremely well is shoot the basketball, and, and they made 18 threes against us, and uh, that was the difference in the basketball. You see they jump up by four. This is really a weird game because They'd be up by uh, by 15 at halftime, stretched out to a 20-point lead, and you'd come all the way back and make it a one-point game. Really a game of runs by both clubs. No, no doubt, and a lot of it has to do with the way that they play, uh, the, the number of players that they play. And, you know, we're a little bit limited when we can get into our bench, but uh, what would happen in that game, we came out and punched them, they punched us back, we punched them again, they punched us back. They just had a little more firepower at the end of the ball game and a little more depth than we had. But I was you certainly proud of our effort. You can see at the last score that was popped up, we were down 17, now down five. And then you, you know, you're going to keep trimming it down, get it back down to five. Uh, so a very competitive game here in the second half. Coach, this was a, a kind of a strange game against Northwestern State. You fall behind, but then you go on a furious rally, get right back in the ball game in the second half. I know you had to be proud of your club, uh, the way they battled back there in the second half. Well, we, you know, we, we. Uh, progressively got farther and farther behind. You know, Northwestern has the one of the the number one uh, offensive team in the Division One. Right. They have the number one and number three leading scores in the country, and Jalen West and Zeke Woodley. So we certainly knew that that they had the firepower, and and we were very concerned with our injury and depth situation. That it, and, and the way that they play, waves of players that you know that we had an opportunity to get. Uh, way behind and maybe the game could get ugly. We were concerned about that. However, uh, we spotted we were down 14 or 15 at the half, but we did not feel like even though we were down 15 that we were out of it. Uh, we felt like if we could make, make a few adjustments, which we were able to, and our players just elevate their play a little bit, well, it wasn't long uh, that you know we had cut the lead to one and had an opportunity to win it. We just frankly ran out of gas um, and just our, our lack of depth became a factor in that particular game, but uh, I was I was proud that the game ended up 13. It, 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 it certainly it's one of those situations where the the, the score was uh, a little bit lar a little bit more than the game was. It was the game was closer than the score, I should say. And, um, and but I was proud of our guys' effort. They battled, and I'm going to continue to expect them to battle the rest of the way out here, uh, the last two regular season games, and then into the league tournament next week. Took the words right out of my mouth. It's hard to believe that we're already down to our final two regular season games and then looking forward to playing in the conference tournament over in Katy, Texas. We're now going to take a look back at some of the most memorable highlights here from the 2014-2015 season here for Southeastern basketball as the regular season's almost over. Greaves now is going to put it on the floor, take it strong, now is going to spin, wide open, fade away, jumper, good. 
Big bucket by Graves, 33-30. Left-handed dribble back to Jenkins, right side down low to Ochi. Ochi lays it up and in. Nice ball movement by the Lions. Ochi's got his first bucket. 6-5 McNeese. Joshua down low to Upson. Upson on Dubier. Skips it across to Jenkins. Cedric, another three on the way. Good. Cedric. His first three, 19 for the year. More on the move, left to right, top of the key, out on the wing, Jackson, Zay for three, that one, yes! Zay knocks the three down, it's 7-2, Lions, and that quick start, Jay Lander won it. Here's six on the shot clock, Fillmore off the Jackson three-pointer, good! And the Lions now with a five-point lead. Jackson again beat Pangos and Lane, but no help defensively on Pangos. It's a turnover, Ochi picks it up. Leaves it to the wing, and the three ball is good by Maggio. But it's some good minutes in that first half. Kind of the shove on Pangos there. Got it inside, and the finish there by Dunham. Fillmore, little head fake. Shoots one. That one's off to Martin. No good. Ups in there with the foul. Fillmore drew contact and didn't get the call, but ups in the bucket. Jackson on the right wing in the middle of Jenkins. Jenkins lays it up and in. Nice give and go. And the Lions lead 22-21. Crossover dribble. Free throw line. Jackson spinning. Going to take it. Wrap around and to Upson. Devonte lays it up and in. Upson to Fillmore. Fillmore looking. Trying to take it to coast to coast. Going to lay it up. It's high. 58-58. Team hit back. Can't shoot. Back to Jenkins. Jenkins for three. Off to Martin. No good. Rebound Upson. Upson to Jackson. Wide open. Lay up and in. 62-61. Lions have the lead with 9.30. Ball, Ochi takes inbounds, pass from Guillory. Ochi turn around, jumper on the way, good. Ochi's on fire here in the second. Coach, we have a chance to look back at, at some of those uh, big wins, some games you played very well in early in the year and here down the stretch. And it, it's... Uh, it, We've talked about it several times through our show that all your goals are still ahead of you. You have two regular season games, uh, still have a chance to go compete for a conference tournament championship in, in, in a couple of weeks. Absolutely, and you know we've very well documented that we've lost uh, last year's leading scorer, Jamichael Hawkins, before the season started, and then we've lost our starting point guard, our starting off guard, and our starting small forward throughout the year. However, our goals are still in front of us, and our, our goal uh, has and will be uh, this year and in future seasons uh, that to win the, win the conference tournament and then certainly advance to the NCAA tournament. That's our goal. That's still out in front of us. By qualifying for the conference tournament, uh, we're going to be uh, in a position to go do that. Now, is that going to be a great challenge? Absolutely. Are we going to have to play our be absolutely our best basketball? Yes. But you see bits and pieces of that. We just have to be able to do it for 40 minutes. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, Lion forward Daniel Greaves is here, and we will meet with him right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton of Heaven. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibahoe and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores which 
accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. I'm Alan Waddell and joined now uh, by forward for Southeastern, Daniel Greaves. As Daniel, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us, having a chance to uh, catch up with you here off the air. Uh, you're a player that has been well-traveled. This is your <laughs> first year here at Southeastern, uh, but played for Coach Ladner in high school and have had several stops. Tell us about your journey here through college basketball. Uh, it's been a wild ride. You know, it's my fourth school in four years. And, um, you know, the Air Force Academy, that's where I started, and, and that was an experience in itself. And then I uh, went to Mississippi back for a junior college, and then from there went to ULM and, and finally ended up here with, uh, when Coach Ladner took the job. So I'm sure that had, a, had, had the connection there of when Coach Ladner was able to get the job here at Southeastern, that was the connection to, to come play here for the Lions? It, that's exactly what it was, you know. I knew he was going to end up taking a job somewhere. You know, I was in a position to graduate from ULM, and, uh, you know, you, you get to transfer immediately eligible if you, if you graduate. Right. And so, um, you know, it was just kind of waiting and see and, and, and see how that turned out. Not often do you see a uh, collegiate athlete who graduates – and then has, still has two years of eligibility because you have an eligibility uh, year next year as well. You're going to be uh, one of the most educated players to ever graduate from Southeastern, already get, about to graduate from grad school and then go for something else. Exactly. I'm on track to graduate next fall. And so that spring semester, I guess I got to start another program or, or you know, move on to something higher. I, mean, I don't know. But it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, I took 24 hours of summer school to graduate to be able to come. So it's, it's been nice. All right, Daniel, let's talk about on the court a little bit. I know uh, this year that there's been some, some ups and downs of the season, have, a, have lost some teammates to, to some big injuries. Uh, you've been have, you personally have had to move positions a little bit, move around and play different uh, roles on the team, uh, but still a couple of regular season games in the conference tournament at Katy. Exactly. You know, it's, it's been a struggle, and every family has their struggles, and, and you can't really get down about it. You've got to kind of pull together and, and reorganize and regroup, and that's what we've tried to do as a team especially here these last couple of weeks, you know, losing so many different people at so many different positions. But, you know, there's no time to, to, to get down on yourself. You just got to keep playing. You know, we still got a couple games left and we still got to run at the tournament. So, you know, that's, that's how we got to approach it every day. I'll ask you this as well. Uh, you, you've been to the, to the mountaintop, so to speak, won a state championship at high uh, in high school uh, for St. Stanislaus and then uh, have played at different programs. Uh, right now, w with what's been going on here this season, how do you stay positive and, and keep it moving forward uh, to just play for the next game? Well, the, the thing that we've always harped on, especially when I played for Coach Ladner in high school, was you can't really worry about the things you can't control. Right. And, and, you know, you just got to attack, you know, take life as it comes. and. It's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's it's not so good, but you can't really do anything else about it except just keep moving on. Well, Daniel, we uh, appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with us. We look forward uh, to watching you these last couple of weeks and then again uh, next season for your for your senior season. Yes, sir. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, Coach Ladner will be back on set, and we'll wrap it up right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. With every stay at Hampton, enjoy our free hot breakfast options. You did a great job. It looks good. Then fuel up with up to 9,000 honors bonus points on a long weekend stay. Make every stay more rewarding and feel the Hamptonality. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelos offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern 
and Southeastern Basketball. Inside Southeastern Basketball is made possible by support from friends of Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center for Housing located in Hammond, Louisiana. Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry serving Tangibaho and Livingston Parishes. They strive to help low-income, elderly, and disabled citizens obtain safe, decent, and affordable housing by using volunteers to build and repair. Homeowners pay for the building materials based on terms they can afford. The Fuller Center is supported by three retail stores, which accept donated items from the public. The reused store features construction supplies, appliances, and furniture. The Fuller Shop carries housewares and decorative items for the homes as well as books, videos, and jewelry, while the Rabbit Hole sells gently used clothes, shoes, and fashion accessories. Visit all three stores at 955 South Morrison Boulevard in Hammond or call 985-419-0256 to schedule a pickup. For details on volunteer opportunities, find them on Facebook under Ginger Ford North Shore Fuller Center or visit www.gingerfordnorthshore.org. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond. Uh, as we welcome back uh, to the set here, the head basketball coach of your Southeastern Lions, Coach Jay Ladner. Coach, let's talk about these final two regular season games. Uh, you're going to play on Thursday night down on the road against UNO and then come home on Saturday to take on Nickel State. Uh, this is two teams, uh, two, two winnable basketball games, and, and a great opportunity to, to get hot going to the conference tournament. Well, uh, you know, certainly uh, we played both of those teams with Zay Jackson, our quarterback. We will not have them or have him for these two games. He's obviously out for the season. Um, but we were fortunate. We were able to win at Nichols, and then UNO beats us on the last shot of the basketball game. So we have an opportunity there uh, in both of those games to be successful. We'll have to play very well. Uh, those are two to uh, one a budding rivalry in UNO. I think you're going to see that that rivalry really take off based on the, the first game that we played them uh, this a uh, couple of weeks ago. And then certainly Nichols has been a longtime rival of Southeastern. So we're, we're anxious to play our, our local teams. There seems to always be a little more excitement about playing those basketball games. But we'll have to play a very good basketball to be successful. Also on Saturday against Nichols State, it's senior day as uh, three Lions seniors will play their final game at the UC over at the University Center. Anochi Ochi, Devontae Upson, and Cedric Jenkins. Well, I can't say enough about those young men. They've, had, they've uh, represented Southeastern Louisiana University with tremendous class and character and integrity. Uh, and the people that are associated and that have great pride in Southeastern should be proud of these young men because they've done it the right way. Uh, they'll always mean a lot to me. They, they were my first, uh, as my first foray into Division I, and they've been my first group of seniors, and I think they've just done a wonderful job. And uh, not only are they outstanding players, outstanding young men. Lions have already punched their ticket for the Southland Conference Tournament in Katy, Texas. Don't really know where Southeastern will be seated or played yet. You want to check out lionsports.net on Sunday. That's when the announcement will be made of when Southeastern will be playing and who their opponent will be in the conference tournament. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner, presented by the Hampton Inn of Hammond.